everyone, we are back and we're learning about the flyback converter. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to size the output capacitor. So let's go. We're looking at the output voltage and there's going to be some ripple across it because we're in two different switching modes. So let's look first at the mode when we have the active switch S here, and here's our flyback converter, when it's on. So when it's on, we have this green path shown here and it's going through the uh, coupled inductor. And at the output, there's just the current and the resistor. So if we look at that on a graph and we look at VO over time, we see it's gonna start at some peak value and then it's gonna decrease like an RC circuit here and it's gonna get to some midpoint until DT. At DT, we're gonna switch the mode. This switch is gonna turn off. The current was going through the inductor. It's gonna keep going through that inductor and it's going to then go through the ideal transformer part and go into, see this purple one, it is going, charging up the capacitor here and also going through the resistor here. So what that means is it's going to be charging up and because we're assuming, assuming it is in average steady state, it's going to be going up to the exact same point here. And just as a reference, the average value here would be average V out, which would be whatever you've already calculated the value to be. To calculate the ripple that we're gonna see here, we wanna see this difference from the maximum to the minimum. We're calling that delta V out. So to calculate that, we need to look at the capacitor here and start with the capacitor equation. So I equals C dV dt, always start with our favorite basic differential equation, and now we're going to put it into discrete time. We know because it's decreasing and increasing the same amount every time, because it's an average steady state, that we only need to look at one of them. So if we look at these two modes, the simpler one in terms of the output characteristics is during the on time, so zero to dt, which is when this active switch is on because during that time, we just have a capacitor and the resistor. So it's just an RC. So we're gonna choose that one to do the analysis to figure out this ripple. So during that time, the current out of the capacitor, that's gonna be the same as the average output. So I O, and then we have the capacitor, and then we have DV. During this time, we're trying to solve for delta V out, so that's gonna become delta V out here, and DT, so what is the time period? It's going from zero to DT, so there we go. So here is our basic equation from that, and we wanna solve for the ripple, that's what we're trying to determine. So we just can rearrange, delta V out equals, move some things over here, so we're gonna go DT divided by C, and then we can multiply by the average IO. If you know your output voltage, sorry, output current already, you can directly put this in and solve for this ripple. If you don't and you have a resistive circuit like this, then you have V out and R, and you know from Ohm's law, V equals I R, so we can replace this I with V out divided by R. So let's put that into there. So delta V out, the ripple, equal to dt over c, and then this is going to become, this is a side, average output over your resistor. So then this becomes average VO, and then our R is gonna go down here, so we can put that here. All right, so this is our output voltage ripple for a flyback converter. In summary, all that you need for the output voltage ripple of a flyback converter is to know the duty ratio, D, the time period or switching frequency, so period is T, the output voltage, the average voltage value, the capacitance of your output capacitor, and then your, the resistance at your load. If you happen to already know the average current, you can just put that into this above equation above and you can solve it as well.
Notice that this is exactly the same equation for the output voltage ripple, for the boost converter, and the buck boost converter. And this has to do with the topology structure when you have the capacitor providing all of the charge to the load resistor during one of the duty phases, then you're going to have essentially the same equation. So this is our equation. You can use it for the flyback converter to figure out the output ripple occurring at the output voltage.